This is Ask Brock. I'm Brock Yorty. This week's question comes from Terry. Brock, can you break down the basics of solids control for me? Sure, Terry. It's been a while since we've talked actual drilling. So, you know, the basics, we're all doing some sort of basic solids control, which is the method of removing solids so that we don't end up having a, you know, high solids content drilling fluid that's going to impact our borehole. But if we, if we drill deep into it and we start thinking, we have three types. We have passive, which is our earthen pit that we dig with, uh, you know, some bends and some dips too to try to facilitate the physics of those solids settling out before they get back to suction. And then next we have physical, and that's with our mud pan, maybe a couple cones, but we're shoveling out the big solids and we can only work as fast as our our helper or our uh, our colleague can on site. And then finally, we have mechanical solids control, which has the widest range of uh, being able to handle different solids, being able to um, keep up with multiple different flows. Uh, there's so many reasons why when we say solids control, we immediately go to mechanical because they're very versatile but they're not the end all be all. And we see that by, you know, we watch online and we see these screens and all this gravel's coming off these screens and we're just like, whoa, look at how good it's cleaning. But if I think back to working with my uncle Carl, he'd go, Brock, I love it when we're drilling gravel. You have to slow down and uh, I can always scoop up that stuff. It doesn't fall apart on me. So really solids control starts at the bit face. As we're turning to the right, the size of the cuttings that are coming out and how they're gonna blow apart as they're coming up out of the hole. So we have to have good size cuttings that we're creating that can come up the borehole. And then next, we need a uphole velocity somewhere between that 60 and 150 feet per minute to be able to keep those solids intact so that when they get to surface, they can easily settle out or we can shovel them or that pickup pump can take them and run them across the scalper and then start the rest of the process. But hey, those pickup pumps, depending on what you're using, they blow solids apart. So we, we did this great job of getting everything to surface and then we send it through something with three or four impellers that can do this. You know, we're looking for a pickup pump that's high volume, low impact. So it's it's really comes back to how are we maintaining a mud weight less than nine pounds per gallon? What I like to say is 8.8. .8. When we hit 8.8, .8, we need to stop. We need to clean up. We need to look at what's happening. We have to uh, maintain a low solid drilling fluid. When we hit nine, it's at nine five quick and then it's 10 and then we're out of control. We're trying to pump off and there's too much. The next issue with solids control units or our solids control method is what we have for circulating volume. It's great to have a solids control mechanical unit on site, but it has to be able to maintain whatever your drilling capacity is. If you wanna drill at 300 gallons a minute and four or five minute rods, that it has to be able to do that, which takes surface area, that screen size and length, and then action, which is either going to be elliptical or high G linear. And we are looking to have semi-dry solids fall off. The same can be said for passive and physical. If, if I'm drilling too fast, we're just going to load up on solids and we're going to have that issue where we can't either circulate to have them settle out in time or we can't shovel them as fast as that we're creating them. And so it really comes down to is controlling the chaos. You know, we have main, we're maintaining solids that can come up and be removed so that we can have a low solids drilling fluid. So if we're drilling a well, we don't get into that porosity zone and start blinding things off and cementing things off. Or if we're trying to install loops or uh, anodes, you know, they're not becoming too buoyant and we're fighting or we induce a fracture. So that's what solids control is all about. The last thing we need to think about is we have cutting action, we have, you know, uphold velocity, and then we have that drilling fluids package. And that's very important because I don't care what solids control method you're using. None of them are designed to inhibit. So none of them are designed to create filtration control. So that's where our chemistry comes in and that's where we can get with a good mud engineering group and we look at how we have good filtration control and we can inhibit those shales and clays so that they don't break up and create more viscosity and more density and get you into that nine pound range where we're 100% past the tipping point and now we're looking at you know pumping off or dump, you know having a vac truck come in and dump. 
So that's the basic solids control, keeping your solids intact, bringing them to surface, having them removed. If that's settling out in a pit, making sure you have the volume. If that's using a, a shovel and cones, making sure that we have time to let those things removed. If it's a solids control unit, that it can handle the circulating volume, that it's easy to remove gravel. It's hard to remove fine sand. As the cones start to run across those, the you know, the the screens for uh, removing the underflow of the cones. If it's not a 200 mesh or 74 micron, you're not really doing it. So again, it's about removing all solids, not just big solids that look cool, but all solids. And that's where we have to go. Great question, Terry. Good luck. Let me know if you're working with a mud pan and some cones, or if you got an earthen pit or you got a solids control unit. Let's talk further about it. Thanks. Thanks.